Now on the bench today then I've got a uh, antenna from uh, HP and the reason I purchased this antenna is because the seller was describing it as a uh, vintage Wi-Fi antenna from 2002. Now this antenna is the uh, Procurve J8134A and you can look at its size and think oh well it can possibly be around 5 dB of gain but uh, you'd be wrong this is only 2.5 dB of gain and back in uh, 2002 it really did cost an arm and a leg for this antenna you, you were looking at shelling out 80 90 pounds for one of these um, if you got it direct from HP it'd be over 100 pounds it really was an expensive piece of kit and this is one of the reasons why I got into uh, you know primarily at first building Wi-Fi antennas because they just cost so much money now I'll leave it up to you to decide if you think something from 2002 should be classed as vintage. I mean, uh, yeah, it's 20 years ago, um, but, uh, you know, whether it's vintage or not is another thing. But the way this is constructed, it's, it's kind of very strange. You know, it's got this uh, wires up here. It's got a rubber mount. It's got a weight in the bottom of the mount. It's got the coax here going into the top. And as I already said... With the length of this, you would think it would be at least 5 dB of gain, but it's not. It's only uh, 2.5 dB. So, before we open it up, let's take it over to the uh, test bench and have a look at its frequency response. So, here is the uh, vintage HP antenna on the bench. Just a simple setup, um, as you've seen before, and we're sweeping from 2 GHz to 3 GHz. And I thought this time we'd look at the output on the Spectrum Analyzer. So here we are on the Spectrum Analyzer then. I don't use this enough in videos, I don't know why. I used to a few years ago, but uh, I stopped using it. But uh, hopefully I'll bring it back in for a few more videos. But as you can see on the Spectrum Analyzer, I've got uh, the line centered here on 2.47 gigahertz. And we've got this lovely frequency response round about here. Bang, uh, spot on for uh, the Wi-Fi Spectrum. I've got the uh, Spectrum Analyzer on max hold at the moment so you can see a more defined line of the frequency response across that area. We're scanning 10 dp for, per division and uh, yeah, a very nice output for the Wi-Fi Spectrum. But you'd expect that from a HP antenna, especially one that cost an absolute fortune back in the day. Well, as you just saw over on the test bench, it certainly does work well in the uh, Wi-Fi spectrum. No complaints there. Uh, the uh, claimed operating frequency of this antenna is 2.4 gigahertz to 2.484 gigahertz. So it's certainly uh, bang on the money with what we've just seen over on the test bench. But I'm interested to see what's on the inside of this. It's probably going to be some kind of PCB judging uh, with the thickness of this but of course I can be wrong it's got this curve to it which is where the uh, pro curve um, range from HP comes from it's got the curve in there um, but as I say you know the length of this you would expect it to be at least 5 dB of gain but it's only 2.5 dB of gain so let's crack this open and uh, see what's on the inside so I've removed the base it's just held in place with one Phillips screw and uh, I want to mention as well that this isn't called an antenna it's called a range extender and there's a few places uh, like this uh, it's now out of stock on Amazon but uh, the seller who was selling it on Amazon claimed that it was 7 dB there's another website uh, who's selling these uh, for an extortionate amount of money claiming 5 dB but uh, on the FCC website it's listed as a range extender not an antenna and the spec sheet on there does say 2.5 dB of gain and it is this particular antenna as well it doesn't have any internal photos but it has a picture of the antenna itself but uh, there you go that's the uh, bottom of there and it's just a heavy chunky piece of rubber really and uh, what looks like a coat hanger I mean it uh, kind of resembles something I would have made in the past I think now I thought it might just be uh, clips with this holding it together but it's actually clips and glue but I really want to take my time with this because I probably want to save this uh, antenna and keep it in my collection but uh, we'll see how we get on but it's definitely glued in as well as clipped in place now we've got something uh, 
interesting here that uh, you know I wasn't expecting to find and bear in mind that this is 2.5 dB of gain that's come from the uh, FCC website so that is where I would trust it I can't find anything on the HP website but as I say it's a little bit old but uh, we've got a collinear uh, design here um, this first section here is uh, 72.1 millimeters and then we've got the top section here which is 54.8 millimeters and we've got some passive components down on here you can see how the uh, path is uh, traced out like this and we've got some veers coming through here that go onto the bottom there and that's uh, a sleeved ground plane and we've got a coil here and you can see how they made it it's pretty ingenious really um, it comes along like this loops back on itself and then it goes th through a veer and we've got a trace on the back here and then there's another veer coming through there to connect it to this so obviously we don't get a short along there and we do have a coil on the PCB it's pretty ingenious but uh, we've got these passive components on here and this looks like an inductor and this looks like a capacitor and remember in previous videos if uh, an antenna is inductive or capacitive then uh, it has different sizes to its wavelength and I think that's what's going on here and uh, they're there to bring this into a wavelength of uh, 2.4 gigahertz remember 2.4 gigahertz um, tends to be around uh, 31.5 millimeters uh, in length but uh, as we've seen many antennas don't always conform by that depending on uh, how they're designed whether they're an inductive design or a capacitive design and uh, I think that's what they're doing with here just uh, making this particular design work at 2.4 gigahertz and uh, that's a sleeved uh, ground plane on the back there if you just imagine it as it would be if it was uh, three-dimensional and not PCB you'd have the tube which you've seen me do in previous videos and then the, the main driven element coming out of the tube that's the same thing we've got going on here at the back on the PCB so because we know from the FCC website that this is only um, 2.5 uh, dB of gain um, I would say that these this inductor here and this capacitor here is probably taking away a lot of the gain because I would expect this uh, collinear to work maybe not 5 dB but getting up for 4 dB of gain because we've only got uh, the two uh, pieces to this I mean normally you'd have another coil here and another section going off to a collinear antenna but uh, we've also got the ground plane ground plane does act as a ballon in this particular design and we've probably got something going on here to uh, keep um, the impedance at 50 ohms that's why we've got this looping back here through another via making contact with the ground plane on this side but I think because we've got these uh, co uh, components in the way of the signal path here they probably eat up a lot of the gain and take that uh, away from the antenna and that's probably why it's only 2.5 dB of gain very um, interesting design but uh, we don't really see this kind of thing going off anymore today although sometimes you will see uh, the in cellular antennas where they're trying to hit uh, different frequencies you see uh, passive components in the signal path sometimes but uh, yeah I didn't expect to find this in here and here's a closer look at those uh, passive components we've got an inductor over here and a capacitor over there and I, I would have to say that this antenna is probably over designed and that's probably why it cost quite a lot of money I mean we don't really need to go into that kind of level of design really I mean uh, adding the components there just adds to the cost so it's always interesting to take a look at these antennas and especially with this one being a blast from the past from 2002 but I think we can safely say that this is a, an over engineered antenna for very little gain no pun intended um, you know with the passive components in there it does all add to the cost and at the end of the day you're only getting 2.4 uh, 2.5 dB of gain out of this uh, you can get more gain out of an antenna just using a single piece of wire putting a few coils in there you can easily achieve 5 dB of gain so over engineered um, you know 
and expensive, uh, especially, I mean, even back in 2002, quite expensive, really. But again, it's always nice to see uh, the inside of some of these antennas. And, uh, you know, can an antenna become a vintage antenna when it's only 20 years old? I don't think so, but probably if I was only 20 years old myself, I'd probably say it's a, a vintage piece of equipment. But uh, now I'm just over 50 years old. I don't think 20 years is really necessarily vintage, but uh, I'll leave that one up to you. So if you did enjoy this video, please give it a uh, thumbs up. Um, drop a comment below and I'll do my best to answer them as I uh, always try and do. And hopefully you'll join me on the next one.